my, I had a really weird. I didn't watch any. My film, so I was as a teenager, was quite literally like Star Wars and Conan the Barbarian and uh, <coughs> that kind of thing. And then, <laughs> I, and then I got into. Um, I did a degree, and I was supposed to do a degree in photojournalism, and changed my mind last minute. And there was a film course, and I did it because it was only twelve hours a week. <laughs> and um, and I watched a film called Bicycle Thief, which an Italian neo-realist film about a guy who saves up for a bike to get this job and then somebody nicks it and it was just it was one of the most amazing it was the first black and white film that wasn't Laurel and Hardy or Harold Lloyd that I'd seen and <laughs> it was a completely there was no action in it it was just beautiful and it's the first subtitle film I ever watched and that changed everything for me so it was just a stunning um, stunning film really good and TV wise probably I mean I loved um, I remember sort of the, that thing, but like with you with the Channel Four, those early days. Yeah. What was it? Stephen Frears, Bang, 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 Kipper Bang. Uh, there was, was Tang. I don't know if that was Stephen. No. Fr- Fr- the Tang Yang Kipper Bang was an absolute classic. But it, Stephen Frears did um, Walter and Walter. Oh, and Walter. June. Yeah. And then they were like the first. I think the very first week on Channel Four was a film called Walter, which yeah. was just like and mesmerising. And the, yeah. but the one thing that really made me sort of love TV and got a TV in my bedroom at the time. Was a thing called One Summer with David Morrissey. Oh yeah, yeah. Which was um, Willie Russell. Wasn't Willie it? Russell, yeah. And it was probably that was eighties, wasn't it? Yeah, it was and mid eighties. And yeah. it was this just incredible story about these two guys who sort of from Liverpool who run off to North Wales, I think. Yeah, they get involved in some kind of yeah, fight in, fight, in like, and with then, a gang and and end up and it's just I think it was a four parter and it was just it was like watching it was brilliant. And I think it's one of those that I think people should discover actually because it is fantastic. It's just come out on DVD recently. Yeah. It's been like 20, 25 years without it's been in one of these where mm. there's been contracts in place where it couldn't get released. And it is amazing. Yeah, yeah I think most people from our, who are our age remember seeing that. Yeah, it's just and one of the best endings. I won't give it away, but one of the best endings ever TV. So yeah, that was probably. I just thought, God, this is just. And what are you, you know. going to say about that? Your favourite scene where little Mo and Trevor had that fight and Trevor died? In East End, <laughs> I love that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we were talking yesterday because we were in Manchester about that scene at the end with Coronation Street when the tram. Uh, oh yeah. Jumped off. Have you seen it? The tram goes off. It was the fiftieth anniversary it's a, episode. And it's a yeah. tram falls off off the tram tracks, and I think the CGI was probably done by. Your description was a fourteen-year-old with a power Mac at home. Yeah. <laughs> Um, my advice um, is that, like, like what you're filming the interview on now, with the advent of digital SLRs um, and you know HD. I mean, obviously on my iPhone now, I've gone from having you know round the house camcorders and things like that. So now I literally shoot most photographs of my children and video footage and stuff on my iPhone. And and when I was a kid, and you know when I wanted to you know first start making films, it was re- you know really. It was I was priced out of the market. I couldn't get hold of the equipment to you know to even make very basic stuff. It wasn't available at all, and so you know I always um, liken when you first starting out in film that a singer songwriter always had an acoustic guitar. You could just buy one from a junk shop for a tenner, and if you wanted to, you could show how talented you were. And filmmakers never really had that because if you wanted to shoot something on film, it was just impossible price wise unless you had funding or backing. So um, so now with the advent of technology. You're in a position where you can, and you you, know, you only have to look on Vimeo and YouTube. But what people are producing on cameras like this, uh, the quality. Um, but one, you know, but one thing that doesn't happen is it doesn't make you a great storyteller. So you've maybe now you've got the technology is caught up and is affordable, um, but it doesn't necessarily. You know, I think great storytelling will always still stand out. So I would sort of say, you know, I remember when, yeah, you know, I've seen kids when we were at college and we were on the film course and making films and they'd be amazing at storyboarding, they'd be amazing at planning and all of this, and then they'd try and make Star Wars 3, and, and it would be the biggest crock of rubbish you'd ever seen, and it's kind of like, um, so another tip would be to sort of start, like I did, you know, when I was inspired by Mean Streets, look at your own life, and look at things you have got access to, and incredible characters you've maybe got access to, and rather than thinking, I've got to hire actors, I've got to hire cameramen, I've got to do this, and taking yourself and putting yourself into a, an environment that you're not comfortable in. I was making it with friends who had no experience, but because we all trusted each other, I was able to flourish. And I think, you know, 
you know, my advice would be make something close to home, something you believe in, something you care about, um, and don't think you've got to jump in and have cranes, trucks, first assistant directors, and people with boom mics. You know, because a great story will always outshine something that looks great. I think probably echoing what Shane just said, really, and and in terms of you know, as a producer, I get sent ideas from first-time filmmakers, and it's got like a sort of half-hour car chase in it, and <laughs> you think. You know, just you know, and you're thinking this is just impossible. So, and also one of the things about film, there's a lot of people who wait two, three, four years. They're waiting for the funding, and actually, what what I think what I think it's about practice. And some people should just even you know, an artist will who's doing live drawing will spend like months and months getting it right and getting the form right. There's a lot of filmmakers just have the idea in the head and then just wait, do what, and then turn up and want create. But actually just get out there and practice and practice storytelling and I think it's one of those things that I think you just build up like anything whether it's playing football or whatever the more practice you do I think the better you get yeah. and I think that's the only advice is just to sort of don't so wait for a funder to tell you it, give you permission to make a film because now you can get a camera for it's unforgiving as well if you make a mistake publicly you know if the first thing you do and you've had no practice you knacker it up and it's rubbish people aren't going to be inclined you know people remember you know I made a film once upon a time in the Midlands that didn't do very well at all and my god you feel it you get out in the cold way you don't do so well and it doesn't live up to expectations and um, so in a way the more mistakes you can make from home uh, mm. and cut your teeth um, but you know because like Mark says people become they think they've got this one story and they wait for years and years and then inevitably if they're in development with somebody people end to tend to sort of overdevelop things and mm. so you've got people going oh the script needs this it needs that it needs the other and they end up whittling away your original idea um, so I think to have a true voice sometimes you need to find that in private and then yeah sort of and, uh, and also just that thing which about develop is that sometimes if you get a film a lot of films take from them being the idea to on the cinema it's, off, it's at least three years whereas and so a lot of these ideas that seem great at the time three years later are not that relevant and I think it's just to have quite a few things don't have one just don't have just one project have a few because there'll be a time when you know I go to these to festivals and suddenly there's loads of horror films on the market and nobody wants to invest in horror but then a couple of horrors come out like low budget and suddenly everyone wants to invest in horror but so you need to have a slate rather than just having one project because I think that helps when you go into meetings and say and I've gone into meetings with a comedy to pitch and they've gone we're not looking for comedies and then you just go oh, okay I'll see you later then whereas actually if you've got three or four things to talk to them about then you're much better and, and I've lied as well in them situations <laughs> when I've been into pitch Dead Man's Shoes was a comedy initially I've made whole ideas up on the spot in meetings and um, you know some of them have turned into really good films hmm. so uh, you know I think it's a case of like Mark says if you do end up with the people out there and you see them on the circuit five years later peddling the same wares and you sort of think it's a real shame mm. because you kind of can't, you know, films take so much out of you personally and, and you know, physically, obviously having to go through the amount of time they take to make um, that, uh, you know, you can't just like sit on one. And The thing is, if you do do well, you know, then you can always still have that passion project. You know, we've got a film that we were talking about from when we first met that we're still not made yet. That, yeah. You know, so it'll never go away but just think about your next you know say just sort of don't write a first film which is on a spaceship with or loads of car chasers you know you know two under or a small amount of characters not a lot of stunts and just concentrate on that